Okay, so we have a model car and it's uh, controlled by a radio and it's moving in the X direction. The motion is directed according to the force displacement graph. This is Fx and this is N. Uh, X is M. And so the graph is divided into specific units one, two, uh, and negative one, negative two. That tells us that the force faces in different uh, directions. The motion of the car is modeled uh, by this specific diagram. So there's a triangle right there and then a trapezoid. Between a, a displacement of zero and three, we have a triangle and then three um, well, actually, 0 and 2. Uh, between 0 and 2, we have a triangle. This is right here. And then this is 3. It goes all the way up until 4. Um, goes in the negative direction. That's the force in the negative, a negative force. And then goes all the way up until... So this point is a displacement of 6. And then right here, it's a displacement of 7. So we're supposed to find the velocity of the car when x equals to uh, 0 0.3 meters, when x equals to 4 point, uh, or, or rather not 0 0.3 meters, but 3.0 meters, x equals to 4 meters, and then x equals to um, 7.0 meters. So we're using the work energy theorem uh, the work is equivalent to the change in kinetic energy. So W equals to one half MV uh, final squared minus one half MV initial squared. Uh, we're told that the car starts from rest when X equals to zero. So that means that this part of the problem will have an initial velocity of zero. So VI equals to uh, zero meters per second. And that means that the um, final uh, kinetic energy will be zero. We don't have to account for that. Uh, we just need to find the work done in moving the, the, the car from the point zero all the way up until the point three. And that's the area of the trapezoid. Because remember, work is uh, force times distance. The y-axis is the force. The x-axis is the distance. So we're going to do 1 half times base, uh, which is from 0 to 2. So 2 meters. And then times the height, which is 2 newtons. That's the energy expended uh, from 0 to 2, or the energy required to move the car from 0 to 2. And then we also have the rectangle, this one, this part, which is just the base times the height. Uh, the base happens to be 1 meter uh, from 2 to 3, and then the height is 2 newtons. And so the total area these two cancel out. We have 2 Newton meter um, plus uh, 2 Newton meter. Remember, Newton meter is another name for a joule. So we have 4 joules. And then 1 half uh, mv squared, mv final squared. We want to find the final velocity. So that's v final squared equals to, if we divide both sides by 1 half m, and this one is one half m. Remember, the mass of the object happens to be two kilograms. Uh, so we're going to plug in those numbers there. This two comes up and changes that to eight. So we have eight joules of uh, uh, two kilograms. That's the v final squared. And it's going to give us a velocity, you know, it's going to give us a final velocity, uh, 8 over 2, that's 4 to find the V final, we have to take the square root of that, so 8 joules over 2 kilograms 
um, and that gives us a v final velocity of square root of 8. Uh, we're just going to do that with the calculator. So square root of uh, 8 divided by 2. Uh, and that gives us 2. So 2 meters per second. Okay, it gives us 2 meters per second. So once again, uh, let's just uh, follow the steps. The energy, the energy required to move the car from zero to uh, from zero meters at the origin to three meters is four joules, and we have um, we have the the final kinetic energy, which is one half mv square mv final squared. And so that's going to give us a V final is the square root of 8 joules over 2 kilograms. Uh, the second part of the problem is they want us to find the velocity. And I'm going to do that in the next page. So we want to find the velocity when x equals to 4.0 meters. Remember, if you look at the diagram, you notice it goes up and then goes down and then um, stops at 4. So there's no change in uh, energy, so we have zero joules between uh, three and four, so that means we still keep the same four joules from before, and um, uh, four joules, and then one half mv squared. We're using the work energy theorem, which says work equals to change in kinetic energy, so work equals to one half mv final squared minus one half mv uh, initial squared the initial kinetic energy is zero since the initial velocity it started from rest so initial velocity happened to be uh, zero meters per second v final squared one half mv final squared uh, we divide both sides by one half m and one half m so it's similar to the previous problem so we have v final squared equals to um, these two comes up and don't forget the mass which is two kilograms the mass of the car model and so we have eight joules of uh, two kilograms we get the, the square root of that so v final is the square root of eight joules over two kilograms and that gives us a final velocity of uh, two meters per second again and that's the velocity at four meters so this is x and this is a force in newtons so the velocity at four meters also happens to be two meters per second and this makes sense because between three and four uh, we don't see any additional energy so we still have the same old energy uh, of four joules that happen between zero and three meters so we're using that um, and the object still has a mass of two kilograms, doesn't change, the mass doesn't change. The last part of the problem, we want to find, first of all, the energy from zero meters to seven uh, meters, and then use that to find the velocity, you know, what's the final velocity when x equals to 7.0 meters. So this is 0 0.0. We go back to our diagram. Uh, it goes up and then down up until 4. So this is from 0 to 2, and then 2 to 3, and then 3 to 4. And then between 4 and 6, it changes to a, a rectangle, and then it's flat all the way up until 7. Uh, this is the x-axis, the motion of the, ob of the car, and this is the y-axis, the force involved. So first of all, we have to we're using the, the work energy theorem, which says that work is the same as change in kinetic energy. So the same work is one half uh, mv final squared minus one half mv initial squared. Our life is a little bit easier because the initial velocity was zero, so that's zero meters per second, and so all we have to do is find the work, and and we already know that the energy between 0 and 4 happens to be 4 joules because this part was 4 joules from the previous, from the initial part. You can see going back 
when we did the computations, uh, we found out that the energy involved is all of that, you know, two Newton meters plus two Newton meters. And then in the second part, the energy involved between three and four happens to be zero joules because we don't have any changes in the force. The force itself, f of x is zero. And remember, the energy is force times zero, s times distance. Even if you're changing distance and your force is zero newtons, you're going to end up with uh, an energy of zero joules. So that's the second part. The only thing we need to compute is the energy from four to seven. Uh, so we're going to do the energy from 4 to 6. It's a triangle. So 1 half base is 4 to 6. That's 2 meters. And then the height is negative 1 um, newtons. So the energy becomes um, these two cancel out. So negative 1 joules. The energy from 6 to 7 or the work done in moving the object from 6 to 7 happens to be 0 joules because we don't have any force acting over there. You see on the y-axis, the force at this point is zero newtons. And if you want to find the work, you always do force times distance. So zero newtons times uh, one meter is just going to give us zero joules. So this part uh, gives us zero joules. So we're summing up all the energy, the total energy, uh, or the total work done from the beginning so between 0 and 3 it's 4 joules plus between uh, 3 and 4 meters it's 0 joules and then plus between 4 and 6 meters is the area of this triangle so that's uh, negative 1 joules and then between 6 and 7 that's right here uh, it's 0 joules so the total work done we just combine the 4 and the 1 joule and we get 3 joules we're going to use that in the work energy theorem. So we have 3 joules equals to 1 half mv final squared. We divide both sides by 1 half m, and this is also 1 half m. Uh, v final squared becomes the same as this 2 comes up, uh, algebra. So 2 times 3 is 6 joules of uh, the mass, which is 2 kilograms. So v final equals to the square root of 6 joules over 2 kilograms. 6 over 2 is 3. And using my calculator, I'm going to take the radical. So this is square root of 6 divided by 2. And that gives us 1.73. So the velocity at x equals to 7 is 1.73. Uh, meters per second. So just a quick recap of the process in finding the velocities at specific points. The first thing you have to do is to remember that uh, you find the energy, the work done in moving the object from 0 to 3 and then from 3 to 4. Initially it's from 0 to 3 and there's a triangle uh, on the rectangle. So finding the areas of those two is going to give you the work done in moving from 0 to 3 because the y-axis is the force and the x-axis is the uh, distance. Uh, by definition, work is force times distance. And we got that energy to be 4 joules. Uh, we compare that to the work energy theorem. The initial energy, the initial kinetic energy happens to be 1 half uh, mv initial uh, squared. The initial velocity is 0. So we are accounting, we're canceling that out. Uh, this is going to be zero energy. Uh, so V final, as you can see, is just a square root of eight joules of two kilograms. Uh, and that gives us two meters per second squared. In the second part, the final velocity is going to remain the same because we don't have energy, any work expanded or ex uh, expanded between uh, three and four. It's zero joules. So we have the same uh, velocity, nothing changes because there's no work input going on. And then in the last part of the problem, we have to find the energy at each section of the displacement. So displacement from 0 to um, 3 is 4 joules, from uh, 3 to 4 is 0 joules, from uh, 4 to 6 is negative 1 joules because the force is going in the opposite direction. And then between 6 and 7, it's 0 joules. 
Uh, we do the math. The work energy theorem cancels out the initial kinetic energy, which is going to be zero. Uh, and so we're only left with the final kinetic energy. We use that. Uh, compare that to the total work we got. The total work was three joules. And so after the math, we get a final velocity at seven of 1.73 meters per second. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, feel free to share any questions, send any questions out. And looking forward to the next problem and enjoy your day. Okay, thanks. Bye.